How is everyone today? My name is Billy Glasgow, archivist at the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library, and I will be doing a brief presentation on the life of Louis E. Martin. Louis Martin is a man that is rarely talked about in the history of presidential administrations. And this is because a great deal of his work was done behind the scenes. With that being said, his influence and contributions to the political empowerment of black people is undeniable. Martin started his professional career as a journalist, but his journey will lead him to become an advisor for three presidential administrations. Martin's political prominence influenced some of the most historical presidential decisions regarding African Americans in the late 20th century, thus being called the godfather of black politics. Louis Emmanuel Martin Jr. was born on November 18, 1912 to Dr. Louis E. Martin and Willa Hill Martin in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Dr. Martin would later move his family to Savannah, Georgia because the weather in Savannah reminded him of the weather in his childhood home of Santiago, Cuba. While growing up in Savannah, Martin also met his wife of 60 years, Gertrude Scott. Martin will return to his birthplace of Tennessee to attend Fisk University and later graduate from the University of Michigan with a degree in journalism in 1934. After college, Martin spent two years in Havana, Cuba as a freelance journalist. When Martin returned to the United States, he was hired as a journalist at the prominent black newspaper, the Chicago Defender in 1936. After only six months at the Chicago Defender, Martin returned to Michigan to assist in establishing a new black newspaper, the Michigan Chronicle, where he served as its first editor and publisher. In 1940, Martin was a founder of the National Newspaper Publishers Association an organization of African-American publishers throughout the United States. Louis Martin's career as a presidential advisor began in 1960 when Democratic politician Robert Shriver recruited him to work with the presidential campaign of John F. Kennedy. Martin was pivotal in advising Kennedy to contact Coretta Scott King to express his grievance over her husband, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., being arrested at a sit-in protest in Atlanta. This moment was instrumental in Kennedy gaining the majority of the black vote during the 1960 presidential election. During this time, Martin also began his tenure as deputy chair of the Democratic National Committee, a position he would hold until the end of President Lyndon B. Johnson's presidency. After Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, Martin was one of few advisors that transitioned to the Johnson administration. Martin was a key contributor to Johnson's Great Society and War on Poverty programs that included the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. During Johnson's presidency, Martin was influential in the president's decision to nominate Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American to serve as justice on the United States Supreme Court. Martin was also a mentor and key benefactor to the political rise of Vernon E. Jordan, former president of the United Negro College Fund, former president of the National Urban League, and advisor to President Bill Clinton and Clifford Alexander, who served in the Kennedy and Johnson's administration and would be appointed by President Jimmy Carter as the first African-American Secretary of Army. Collections containing records of Louis E. Martin housed at the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library and Museum consists of textual documents, photographic material, and audiovisual material related to the work Martin did as special assistant to President Carter from 1978 until 1981. Under the Carter administration, 
Martin served as the primary liaison between the President of the United States and the Black community. Martin experienced as a journalist and tenure as advisor to two previous presidents made him a successful representative of the Black community during Carter's presidency.